I have finally got around to doing a redstone video. I know, I know, I need, I need a round of applause for this. So, buttons. Good for doors. And then they stop. This can be fixed by making a clock. Um, which I might cover in a later video, doing more simple things, but this is the more useful, one of the more useful circuits I've found ever. So I thought I'd get that out of the way and do it first. Now, you know, to get it to stick with buttons, or pressure pads even, you need a memory latch. The only problem with these is, the normal ones anyway, that, um, yeah, you need two inputs. Um, and that's quite a problem. Now, this over here, slightly unrelated, but I'll come back to it, is an AND gate. It's useful because it can do different things. It's off when either or are on, or none at all. But when both are on, it's on. And this is useful in its own right if you have, say, doors that need two switches. So if you had a lever for a door, and this was it, the door wouldn't open until a safety switch had been pulled on the other side. But they have a bigger use over here, in this chip. Now, I said earlier buttons cannot function as levers. Well, they can. With this. See? It's not going back. It goes out. You can also have it either side of a door. So say the door's here. This wall should function as a door. You can have it there. To open the door, maybe. It just disappeared. Don't know whether it's all for you. And here. To close the door again. Like that. Now, this is incredibly useful. Because it's compact. Uh, the original is much bigger. Oh, yeah, also it works with pressure plates. However, you can't stand on them for too long because it just, um... Yeah. But it does work for pressure plates. So as long as you're quick, it does it. Now, it's rather compact. The other one is huge, as I probably mentioned a few seconds ago. Um, so, whoever originally made this was a genius... I have no idea who you are. I learned how to do this a while ago. So, um, yeah, I can't give credit to them. What you need is, I've already tried it over here and then a creeper got it. So, um, yeah. What you need is, I'll move away from the right so you can distinguish. You need that, that, uh, that, and that. So basically it's 4 by 3 by 2. Four long, three wide, two up. Then what you need is a set of three repeaters, all on their highest setting. If they're not on their highest setting, it glitches. So that's there, there, and make sure this one is facing towards. Where, make sure they're all facing towards where I'm pointing. Otherwise, it won't work. What you do after that is you set up the torches. So you need one there, one there. Hang on, let me get this right. One there, one there. One there, and one there. Then all you've got left is redstone. There, 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 and there. Now this is the output. This thing here is the output. So that's just going to destroy its own wiring. There we go. Oh, and an input as well, which is a button. There you go. All done. And that is how you get it to function. Now, as long as any, as long as the power goes into here, anything can be hooked up to it. So, and the, oh, and the only way to get it to do it is a repeater, because you actually need to power this bit, not that, not that block. And for some reason, leading up direct redstone wiring like that doesn't work, so that'll have to do. Um, but as long as it goes into there, anything will work anywhere, and any number of them. So you can have like five or six switches to open a door, for instance, just because, just because you can. Um, so, one here, for instance, and maybe one over here, and they will all, oh, and they will all function, as you can probably hear, I did turn sound on, but I don't know whether it's working very well. So yeah, that's that switch. I might do simpler ones later, but this is the more useful one I've found, and I haven't seen very many people actually using it, so... Thought I'd spread the joy. Anyway, after that, goodbye.